let us understand the concept of ambiguous cases. It comes into existence when we are talking about solving triangles and when we are given side, side and angle, right? That is kind of important. Whenever we are given two sides and an angle, which is not included in between the sides, then we have ambiguous cases. Now, in such cases, there are two conditions. One is that the angle given is acute angle. So we have angle A, which is less than 90 degrees. And the other case is when angle A is greater than 90 degrees, right? So that is obtuse angle, right? And this is acute angle. Now in case of acute angle, the side A, so let's consider acute angle first and then we'll discuss obtuse angle. Let us say we are given two sides and the angle A. So we'll just draw a triangle first. Let's say we have a triangle here and in this triangle we are given angle A, that is our angle A. We are given a side so we'll call this side as side B and the vertex here as B, right? Now, at present, closing it with a dotted line. I'll explain you why. And what we are really given is side, side, and angle. That means we are given side B, which is opposite to angle B, and side A, which is opposite to angle A. So we are given these three things, these two sides and the angle. As you can note here, angle is not the angle in between them, right? So angle is SSA condition, right? So it is not the included angle. That's kind of critical thing to understand. And in the first scenario, we are considering when angle A is acute. In case it is obtuse, in that case, your triangle will look something like this, right? It will be kind of like this. It becomes an obtuse angle, right? Now, in an acute angle as shown here, if I drop a perpendicular from vertex C, let us say like this, and this is my vertex C, in that case, what should be the length of this perpendicular? Let us say this point is D. What should be the length of this perpendicular? From trigonometric relations, we know CD, since this is perpendicular, is opposite to side angle A, right? CD is opposite to angle A. Therefore, we can write CD over AC, which is the hypotenuse in this case, should be equal to sine of angle A, right? Now, that gives us a condition that CD should be equal to AC times sine of angle A. Right? Now, what is AC? AC is B for us, right? So, AC is B, so I'll write B here, B sine A. And CD is side opposite to angle A, so we are calling that as A. So that is what we have. If we have a right triangle, in that case, this side CD should be equal to B sine A, correct? So in that case, we get just one triangle, and that one triangle is the right triangle, right? So if they are equal, what we get is a right triangle. So this is what we get. And solution is unique, just one distinct triangle. Now consider the case when A is actually greater than, now in this case A is equal to B sine A and therefore you get one triangle. Now let us consider a case when A is greater than B sine A. Now in that case what happens? If A is not CD, if it is longer, let's say A is longer, in that case if you make, you will make two triangles, do you see that? So if it is longer, in that case, you may make this triangle or this triangle. As you see here, these sides are equal, right? So the possibility is that your point B will be here or at that place. So you get two particular solutions here. One is triangle A, B dash C and the other one is A, B, C, right? So these are the two triangles possible in case side A is longer than the perpendicular of the triangle. Perpendicular of the triangle is B sine A. Remember that, right? And that is the reason why 
we always compare this side with the perpendicular B sine A, right? So in this case, you get two cases. So we have two triangles. So we have two triangles. Now imagine the third case, and that is that A is less than B sine A. If A is less than B sine A, then what happens? B sine A is length CD. That means it is less, means it is not even reaching here, right? In that case, what will happen? So in that case, you cannot form a triangle, right? So A is kind of here. Do you see that? So in that particular case, we have no solution, right? So no triangle is formed in that particular case. So we have three conditions from here, right? So let me now summarize the three conditions. And the three conditions really depend on comparing the value of A with B sine A, where B sine A is the altitude or the height of the triangle, right? So if A is equals to B sine A, in that case, we have right angle triangle. So we have one triangle, which is right angle triangle. But in case A is greater than B sine A, in that case, we get two triangles. And if A is less than B sine A, then we do not get any triangles. So there is no triangle, or I'll say zero triangles, right? And you should remember, when we are comparing with B sine A, what is B sine A equals to? Let me write here, B sine A is actually altitude, or height of the triangle, okay? Or height or triangle. Remember that part. So that is how we will do the cases when A is acute, right? Now in case A is greater than 90 degrees, that means it's an obtuse angle. So in this particular case, let us say this is my vertex A, vertex B and this is C for us. So here as you can see, Side A should always be greater than side B, right? Since it is an obtuse triangle, then in that case, side A should always be greater than side B, right? So if A is greater than B, then only we can have a triangle, then one triangle is possible. If A is given to us less than B, then triangle cannot be formed. As you know, angle opposite to bigger angle will always be longest, right? It will always be biggest. Otherwise, you cannot make a triangle. So if A is less than B, then zero triangles or no triangles are possible, right? So in this case, no solution. So there are two cases when you have an obtuse angle, and that is just compare the value of A and B, right? So that is how you can get your solution. So we'll do a number of questions now relating to these cases. And then I hope your concept about ambiguous cases will be absolutely clear. Thank you.